ArcGIS Pro Intelligence, or Pro Intel for short, is designed specifically for the needs of intelligence workflows and supports analysis and understanding of data, not only in spatial and temporal formats, but through multiple types of views, including link charts. In this video, we'll demonstrate how to create and use link charts to visualize and analyze relationships in your data. In the map view, we see a layer of gun-based homicides from 2020 and a layer of DC wards overlaid on a dark gray base map. The first relationship we'd like to visualize in a link chart is the number of gun-based homicides per ward. A simple spatial join was performed on the homicide layer so that each homicide will have its associated ward attributes. We have this relationship in tabular form, but it's certainly hard to visualize how many fall in each ward. To get a better understanding, let's put it into a link chart. On the Analysis tab, I choose Create New Link Chart. Next, we add the entities that we'd like to link. The first entity is the Wards layer, and I'll use the Ward Name field as the Entity field. Once I add the entity, I'll change the symbology. By default, the symbology matches that of the map view, but the light gray is difficult to see. I'll change it to blue. To add a second entity, I'll click the Entity Type button and it will be the Homicides layer. The Entity field is CCN, which contains unique IDs for each homicide. Now that my entities are added, the next step is to specify how they are related. I'll click the Relationship Type button and choose Wards as the Source Entities and Homicides as the Target Entities. Because of the spatial join we performed on the homicides and wards, both layers contain fields with ward names. That means my key type will be entities, and the key fields from both tables will be the ward field. I click OK and zoom to the full extent. I see all the homicides on the periphery of the circles connected to the wards in the center. Hovering over the center of the circle with the most connections, I see this is ward 8. Each homicide displays its ID when I hover over it. If I go to the lower right, I see Ward 3 has the fewest number of homicides. At any time, I can rename a view, and I'll rename this link chart Wards underscore Crimes. The second relationship we'd like to visualize in this link chart is that of shot spotter locations to homicides. Let's turn on a layer of shot spotter locations which are sensors that capture potential gunshot events and writes them to a data layer. We would like to determine if our data layers show relationships between where the gun-based homicides occurred and the time and location of the shot spotter data captures. This may help us explore whether the shot spotter sensors are recording gunshots effectively in relation to homicides. First, we need to break this problem down into component parts. We first need to identify the shot spotter data captures near each homicide within 24 hours of the homicide event. To minimize the distance search for shot spotters, we created a 500 meter buffer around each homicide. Each buffer retains the attributes of the homicide. Next, we'll take the homicide and shot spotter layers, both of which are time enabled and we'll use the Compare Areas tool to identify which shot spotters were detected within 24 hours of each homicide. On the Analysis tab in the Tool dropdown, I have a category of Movement Analysis Tools, and we'll select the Compare Areas tool. In the Geoprocessing pane on the right, my input point layer is the shot spotters. My input area layer is the homicide buffer layer. I'll call the output layer CA for compare areas, underscore shot spot and homicides. The name field for shot spotters will be the unique ID field, and the name field for the homicide buffers will be the CCN field, which contains unique identifiers. Our relationship will be based on location and time, and we want to identify those shot spotter data captures that occurred within one day of the homicide event. I'll run the tool, and the output is a polygon layer with the following attributes. Each polygon has an area ID that represents the buffered homicide. I'm going to sort them in ascending order. In this example, we see that the first buffered homicide's area ID appears twice in the attribute table. That means two shot spotter sensors detected potential gunshots around the time of the homicide. The track ID field identifies which shot spotter locations they were. 
Now that we've identified the shot spotters occurring near the time of each homicide, we'll have the ability to visualize these links in the link chart. In order to do so, we first have to add our shot spotter layer as an entity type. We'll activate the link chart diagram tab and click entity type to add this new entity. We'll select the ID field as the entity field and call this shot spotter by ID. I see the shot spotter locations added to my link chart view. Next, we want to create a relationship type that links shot spotters to the homicides, but we only want to link shot spotters data captures that occurred within 24 hours of each homicide and within 500 meters of each homicide. To accomplish this, we have to use the compare areas output layer as a foreign key layer, meaning it will only allow the shot spotters meeting our time and location criteria to be linked to the homicides. Let's create a new relationship type where the source entities are the homicides and the target entities are the shot spotters by ID. We'll call this relationship homicides to shot spotters and it will be based on a foreign key. The foreign key layer is our compare areas output layer that contain both the homicide IDs and the shot spotter IDs. The source entity key field is CCN. It is the unique identifier from the homicides layer. The target entity key field is ID, which is the unique identifier of the shot spotter sensor. The matching source key field from the foreign key layer is the area ID, which contains the unique homicide IDs. The matching target key field from the foreign key layer is called track ID, and this contains the shot spotter unique IDs. I'll click OK to create the relationship, and let's change the layout to get a better visualization. On the Change Layout dropdown, I'll choose Clustered, and then I'll specify to show only shot spotter points that are linked to a homicide by setting the filter link's minimum number to 1. I'll also change the symbology of the lines that link the shot spotter points to the homicide points to yellow to make them easier to see. For the homicides in Ward 8, we see that most have at least one shot spotter linked to it. On the right, there are shot spotters linked to more than one homicide. And for two wards, there are no shot spotters linked to any of the homicides at all. In this example, we used link charts to explore how well shot spotters detected gunshots related to homicides. But we also uncovered a potential need to add more shot spotter locations in those wards where no shot spotters were connected to homicides. Mm -hmm.